to remind everyone, and that includes myself, <laughs> to please make sure that all cell phones are turned to the off or vibrate position. And also, please be advised our city council meetings are broadcast on Comcast Channel 99, AT&T Universe, and the City of Gaston YouTube. This meeting of the Gaston City Council will now come to order. The chair calls on City Council Ivan Nelson for the roll call. Councilwoman Tolles. Here. Councilman Williams. Here. Worthy. Here. Back. Here. Wilson. Here. Cannon. Here. And Ray. Here. We have a quorum present and our meeting is open for business. I'm going to ask Brian Harbison to lead the invitation. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, we thank you for the freedom to assemble here today. God, we pray that everything we do will bring glory to you. And as we enter uh, the Easter season, God, we just are so thankful for the sacrifice you made, sending your son Jesus for us. We certainly didn't deserve that and don't deserve the freedom we have today. But we know by your mercy and grace you provide that. I ask for your wisdom for our council today and the decisions they'll be making. God, I continue to pray for uh, the mayor and his administration that you'll give him wisdom. God, we just pray everything we do today will bring glory to you and we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We do not have the uh, EMA. They're not coming today, so we will move on with our agenda. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the Finance Committee meeting on March the 9th and the Public Safety Committee meeting, work session, and City Council meeting that was held March the 16th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be number saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to approve minutes. The chair will entertain a motion to ratify payments of account for the week of March the 12th through the 18th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be number saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to ratify payment of the accounts. Proclamations? We have none. Unfinished business. Uh, there's no council action that will be necessary regarding the resolution on 2441 Fairview Road in District 7. The nuisance has already been abated by the owner. Our next item, uh, <clears throat> this is a time and place as advertised to conduct a public hearing allowing anyone to speak in opposition to or in favor of a resolution or an abatement of nuisance on property located at 1606 Harlem Avenue in District 1, the state of Alabama possible right of redemption to the estate of Lily Mae Johnson, Marcel, and Annie Pearl Johnson, and the heirs of Lily Mae Johnson, Parcel, as followed. Eddie Marcel, Thelma, Thelma Harris, Annie Gaston Johnson, Johnny Johnson, and Floyd L. Johnson being the last known owners. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? If you'll come to the mic, if you'll come to the mic and give your name and address, please. Good morning. Councilman Williams. Is it home? And there's a picture of the. Oh, uh, yes. I'm Johnny Johnson, and I'm at 1314 River Street, East Gaston, Alabama. Mm -hmm. And the property is uh, my mom's that was deceased, and my father was deceased. It was left to us, the kids. And uh, I have been keeping the, uh, the property up, you know, the maintenance up on the property. But the house is like, it's, it's deteriorating, and uh, I'm finna get ready to move a uh, double-wide trail on that property. The house has got to be torn down. 
So what are, what are, are you all going to tear it down? Uh, yes, uh, most of my family members are deceased. So it's just me and my oldest sister. So, so I guess I'm, I'm asking, are, it is, is it your plans and when do you plan on tearing it down? Uh, sometime this year, like probably in the summertime. Well, would you like for us to tear it down and you just make payments right here? Uh, yes, if, uh, if it's, you know, reasonable. Well, just Mr. Johnson, just so you know, what will happen is if you don't tear it down and we pass this abatement today, uh -huh. then at any point in the future, it can be torn down by the city and they're just going to apply whatever the actual cost to tear it down was, you know, depending on how big the house is and how much debris had to get pulled off. They'll calculate uh, how much it actually costs to demolish the house and then you'll owe that to the city as a lien on the property, meaning you couldn't get a new building permit there, or you couldn't sell the house to somebody else without settling that up. So that's, that's the way it, it works. And then you would have to approach the city and make some sort of arrangements to get that, that paid off, to get that lien taken off the property. Um. Where do I need to find out that more information? Like, uh, it I can, like I can have it tore down it myself. It may not be that expensive, uh -huh. to, but just know that if you don't tear it down, and we pass this today, the yeah. city's going to come tear it down, and then you would be responsible for whatever that cost is. I just want you to understand oh, what's okay. happening here. Mr. Harbison would be the person that you need to talk to uh, at this time, but. Uh, since it's in my district, and I, I can tell you before uh, you sit down that I'm going to abate it, but if you all tear it down before the city gets to it, that's, you know, that's fine. You're still in the clear, but we need to go ahead and abate this uh, property, which means that if you don't tear it down, we'll tear it down. Mm. Do, you, do you understand? What, do yeah, you understand I, I understand. Uh, okay, well, let's, let's do it that way then. Have you already been through the steps about trying to get a trailer put on that property? Well, uh, I had to uh, fill out an application for, you know, you have to go through a process to fill out an application and all that good stuff. Right. So uh, I'm just getting, in it, getting everything in progress. Okay. Okay. Talk right. to him afterwards, Mr. Harbison. Now, he may be able to uh, let you know a little something, okay? All right. About the price. Give you an estimate, maybe. Oh, okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Is there anyone speaking in favor? Madam President, I am Brian Harbison with the Building Department. We filed this case in November of 2019. There have been no improvements, so there are no permits to improve. We would actually uh, prefer that Mr. Johnson demolish the house himself. Uh, I'll be glad to put him in touch with a uh, dumpster company to put it out there. But unfortunately, we, we're not going to be able to wait till summer. Uh, this case has been going on uh, over two years. And so we're going to have to have some, uh, some progress made rather quickly. I'll talk to him after the council meeting and let him know some of the uh, the costs that are being incurred and giving some recommendations there. Today we're asking for a resolution. Thank you. Okay. okay. Madam President? Yes. I, obviously, this is not in my district, but, but something I'd like, I've said before, and I think it bears repeating. Uh, Mr. Harbison, in, in just about all of these cases, um, does a great deal of coaching. Um, he, 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 if, you, if you reach out to him, and in many, many cases, he'll reach out to you, but if you reach out to him, he'll walk you through your options. And he can make them a whole lot plainer um, and, and, under, and, more, and understandable than typically we can. But you know what I would encourage anybody in your situation is just have a conversation with him, schedule some time, really anybody in his department. And they do a lot of coaching at this point. Um, and and they'll, they'll walk you through the, the steps of what your, your options are. Okay, so 
Uh, again, if any part of this was confusing or, or if you missed it, just please see him and I think he can help. Yeah. Yeah, well, Mr. Johnson, you, you do know that the, the house, according to Mr. Harbison, has not been lived in in, in quite a while. And so, according to the pictures, the, uh, the house is con totally and completely uh, dilapidated. So, I understand that you are in agreement with tearing it down, but it's just that we can't give you any time on tearing it down since you said summer. So, what I'm going to do is to, uh, uh, rec to abate the nuisance. And then, you know, you can have a conversation with uh, Mr. Harbison after our council meeting. So I move to abate. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. And I'd also like to add, most of the time, and I think most of the councilmen up here would agree that most of the time when we agree to give you 30 days or give you uh, so many days to do it, it ends up back up here because it was not done. So uh, it's, it's really, um, you know, we try to be good about it. But uh, I was told last week by a constituent that if some of you all pass by some of these houses, you can get out yourself and go tear them down. That's just how bad some of them are. So we just want you, you to know that it's, it's not about us trying to, it's just we have, it's an eyesore in the community and we're just trying to help to rectify uh, that. Can I, can I add to that, Madam President? Mm -hmm. Most people think when we uh, condemn a house and tear it down, we own the property. We do not own the property. We don't want to own the property. All we do is the city put a lien on it for whatever it costs to tear that property down and the uh, tonnage to take it to the landfill. So, uh, so when you do sell that property, we could try to recoup some of our money, and most of the time, we don't recoup it. So, uh, I just okay. want people to know because I know a lot of people been saying, "Well, we're taking people property, but we do not own the property, do, or we don't want to own it anyway." So, thank you. Our next public hearing is a resolution on abatement of nuisance on property located at 310 North 32nd Street in District 6. And this is Helen Ann Nichols and Sharon Gaither being the last known owners. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Is there anyone speaking in favor? Madam President, we filed this case in February of 2020. There have been no improvements, there are no permits to improve, and we're asking today for a resolution to abate this nuisance. As y'all can see, this is in District 6. As y'all can see, the, uh, the structure is not sound. Mr. Harbison passed a picture by where the structure is not sound on one corner right there. At one time, that was a nice looking house at one time. What is the pleasure of the council? Move to abate. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known to say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Our final public hearing is a resolution authorizing annulment of a portion of an unnamed alley that's located off of Duncan Court in District 7, and as requested by the adjacent property owners, all utility companies have been notified and are allowed by state law to maintain any utility facilities located in the alley. Is there anyone who would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Is there anyone speaking in favor? If you give your name and address, please. Yes, ma'am. My name is Chris Montanari. Uh, I live at 215 Brindley. I'm one of the petitioners. Uh, I own approximately eight or nine acres uh, the alley's in. And uh, I just found out about the alley when I was trying to build a building and realized that there's an alley on my property. That's, that's, why, we're, that's why I'm here. And all my neighbors uh, have agreed to it. Okay. Thank you. All Appreciate right, y'all's time. Okay. 
Lee, quick question. Is it my understanding that when we do that annulment of the alley, it splits the land evenly amongst the neighboring land holders? All the way to the single line. Yeah. So just to clarify, guys, this happens sometimes. A lot of old downtown communities have alleyways that run in between the, the two houses. And so what we'll do is annul that and just give the property to the property owners right down the middle of the street. If you live on this side, you get half. If you live on that side, you get the other half. So I own, I own both, both sides. Sure. So I just mean for, for principle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You'll get two equal halves. Thank you. <laughs> I don't want to give you half my garage. <laughs> What is the motion? We don't have one yet. Okay. We've had discussion. Do I have a motion to Trump adopt it? Second. Clerk, Clerk, will you take the vote? John. Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. The next resolution is authorizing a co-sponsorship agreement with the Gas and Airport Authority. And this is an agreement required by the FAA, which specifies the role of the city and the airport authority regarding the airport and to comply with the existing and future grants. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known as saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. Is there any new business? Madam President, I have one. This comes from the engineering department. It's a, a resolution authorizing an agreement with JBWNT Incorporated. This is to uh, provide construction engineering and inspection services required to grout, fill abandoned sanitary sewer mains, and stabilize the subgrade to facilitate an expansion at Prince Metal Stamping, and this is in the amount of $15,000. Ask for unanimous consent. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider the resolution today as an item of new business, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <coughs> consent has been granted. I move for adoption. Second. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries to adopt. Do we have any more new business? Yes, Madam President, I have one. It's uh, a resolution opposing Senate Bill 247. Uh, I'd like to ask for consideration today. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider the resolution today under new business, let it be known as saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent has been granted. Madam President, before I make a motion for adoption, um, I'd like to read the uh, resolution in its entirety. <clears throat> Whereas Senate Bill 247 is a piece of local legislation in the Alabama House of Representatives that proposes a local Constitution amendment to phase out occupational, occupational license fees for cities in Etowah County, and whereas the Gadsden City Council wishes to express their concern and opposition to the members of the Etowah County delegation to Alabama House of, to the Alabama House of Representatives, and whereas the city of Gadsden is one of five municipalities in Etowah County who collect occupational taxes, and we respect, respectfully oppose this bill. The effects of such a measure would be detrimental for our city for years and decades to come. We also take issue with the manner in which this bill has been introduced and whereas like the four other municipalities in the county with an occupational license fee, Gadsden's OLF tax rate is set at 2% and those revenues make up a significant portion of our budget. City Finance Director Lisa Rosser said the city collected $15.8 million in OLF during fiscal year 2020, which constitutes 29% of our general fund budget. The bill would reduce the OLF by a tenth of a percent every year for 20 years, but for Gasden, 
that still comes out to an additional loss of more than $750,000 each year. And whereas together with our sales tax revenues, the OLF is critical to maintaining the day-to-day -day operations of the city. Without this funding, there will be a necessary cutback in services along with a reduction in workforce, which would contribute to a rise in unemployment. With the loss of such a major portion of our operating budget, each expenditure would have to be re-examined. And whereas despite decades-long shifts in population, Gasden remains the economic and cultural hub of Etowah County, and city contributions benefit residents from throughout the area. The city of Gasden supports its vibrant downtown with funding to get to Downtown Gasden, Inc., the Gasden Museum of Arts, and the Mary G. Harden Center for Cultural Arts. The Gasden Public Library is also a valuable resource for residents. And whereas Nakalua Falls Park is an amenity enjoyed by residents and tourists alike, as is Marana Park, the city's flagship park that recently underwent a substantial renovation. The venue at Coosa Landing, a city facility available to host events, Twin Bridges Golf Course, Coosa Landing and its fishing tournaments for a cemetery, all fill important roles in local life and whereas the city provides substantial funding to entities aimed at improving the business environment in Etowah County, including Gasden Etowah Industrial Development Authority and the Gasden Commercial Development Authority, as well as the Gasden Airport Authority and the Northeast Alabama Regional Airport. And whereas the previous items are not a complete list, but they still make up more than $6 million in yearly spending that doesn't include a multi-million dollar investment in a community sports complex at Gadsden State Community College or millions spent annually on infrastructure improvements. And whereas such a drastic cut would also, also affect the city's future financial prospects, in addition to the added strain of meeting existing financial obligations. Finance Director Rosser reports, the loss of revenue would cause a probable downgrade in our bond rating, which could cause a multitude of complications. Though the city has been fiscally responsible and is currently in strong financial shape, Probable bond rating trouble has been one factor that has led to the, to the municipal bankruptcy in other places around the state. And whereas we also strongly disagree with how this legislation has been presented by its sponsor, Senator Andrew Jones, contrary to usual procedure and, courtesies, uh, and courtesy before the introduction of local legislation, Senator Jones did not discuss this issue with Mayor Guyton members of the Gaston City Council or some of the other mayors in the county whose cities would be affected. Members of the state legislature should work with municipal officials in their districts on matters of local importance, but that has not happened in this case. And whereas Senator Gats, and whereas Gazden is dealing with the loss of Goodyear, who was our largest industrial employer, Senator Jones wants to cut more from the city's budget pointing out that this will only lead to layoffs or cuts in service, or both, is not a scare, it's not a scare tactic, it's being realistic. Now therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the, of the City of Gadsden, Alabama, that this bill would have decades of negative impact on Etowah County, and the City of Gadsden respectfully opposes it. And of course it reads, we the undersigned hereby certify that the above and foregoing was duly adopted by the City Council of Gadsden, Alabama at an open public meeting held today. I entertain a motion to adopt. Second. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. Okay, is there any other new business? If not, we'll go to uh, department reports. Citizen request, it's Mrs. Uh, Emma Clapp here today, a family success. Talk about coming, upcoming events and food drive. Ms. 
Hi, my name is Emma Hazelwood Clapp. I work at the Family Success Center. I'm the executive director over there. I brought with me today Victoria Smith, who's one of our JSU interns, who is working really hard on this proposal that we're going to, well, it's not only proposal, but some information we want to give to you about this. Uh, recently, we sat down and talked to some students who were with the Chamber of Student Leadership, the Etowah Leadership Group. And they sat down and talked to us about problems that kids today face. And one of the problems that we figured out upon talking to them was that there are a lot of high school kids who were going hungry that is not really addressed. Now, we've got some really great programs here in town, and we know that we do, like the Etowah Baptist Mission Center, the Gaston, uh, the Catholic Center of Concern, lots of great churches. And a lot of schools are being sponsored by backpack programs through churches as well, so we're thankful for that. But a lot of the high school students, according to these kids, were being missed. And when we started talking to them about it, we figured, what can we do about it? Part of the Family Success Center's mission is to strengthen families. And what we like to do is go out in our community and find out what is a need that we can possibly meet. We know that we can't meet every need, but this was something that we thought we could actually do. So I had Victoria here go through and do a lot of research, and we've been doing a lot of research about it about Etowah County. And of course, we know that child hunger is rampant across the US. We know that it's also an issue here in Alabama. One in seven kids go hungry. 32% of children are living in poverty in Etowah County, according to the 2019 statistics. That means about 25 to 26% are dealing with not having enough nutrition. And the population that oftentimes gets missed is teenagers. We get to hear a lot about parents who give up their food so their kids can eat, but we're not talking about the, the teenagers who will give up their meals to their parents and to their younger siblings to make sure that they're fed. And it happens a lot. It happens a lot here in Etowah County. So we decided to start a food bank. What else can we do? Start a food bank. So we went to Gaston City High School because it's our biggest high school and figured out how can we help these kids? What are our barriers? After lots of conversations, we found out that one of our biggest barriers is that teenagers have, it's not, it's an embarrassment of people knowing that they're hungry. They don't have a discreet way to get food. They're not gonna ask for help. They don't wanna get bullied. All of these things happen. And a lot of the kids that we spoke to, spoke to that happening, how they don't want their peers to know their situation at home. So speaking to Gaston City High School, we found out that we can find four or five locations within the high school that teenagers can have access to food, that they can just go and pick up discreetly. Nobody will ever know. They can bring it home on the evenings and on the weekends, not only for themselves, but for their families as well. So we've been out there hunting food. We're making our first donation tomorrow to Gaston City High School around 10 o'clock in the morning, and we're bringing a lot. And we are looking for any assistance from the community about getting food into our office so we can bring it to them. Now, our ultimate goal is to hit every school. We want to go across the county, middle schools, elementary schools. But we're starting with the big one first. After speaking to the principal and the teachers and the different groups, this is a big need that Gaston City has. And I just can't imagine our kids going hungry. And the idea of a 16-year-old giving up his meal so his parents and his children, his younger siblings can eat is just heartbreaking for us. So we've collected a lot of food, but we still need more. So we need easy to open pop top cans, things that are easy to make in order to give these to these kids so they can bring it home that are shelf stable. We don't want things that are expired. We don't want things that they can't make. We need good quality items. So anybody can make a donation to the center for food and we'll deliver it, we'll hand deliver it and make sure it gets in the right people's hands. So that was the first thing we wanted to bring up. We are tackling this right here in our city first because we feel like this is one of our biggest needs. Now we're gonna eventually move out, but Gaston City is our biggest school. So we gave you some information here about what we are looking for food-wise, some data on the next page, so you can feel free to share this with your constituents and how to get information to them so they can come and possibly help us out. Thankfully, we've gotten a lot of work. We, we did a um, food drive in November for Thanksgiving and we gave out 300 bags of food. That was a full meal for Thanksgiving, including turkeys. So we were very lucky in order to be able to do that. We're hoping to get the same outcome this time around. So having said that, we have our actual fundraiser that's coming up on May 1st. And y'all were great to sponsor last year, so we're hoping that will happen again this year because it, without that kind of sponsorship, we can't do what we do. We see 30,000 unique individuals in Etowah County. We see over 12,000 children between 10 and 12,000 children and teach them about child abuse. We offer free financial stability coaching. We offer free counseling. 
We have 12 programs in our office that we have to keep our doors open, and this, these fundraisers are how we keep these doors open. So I just wanted to give you the information about that as well, so you had it, just in case you were wondering what you guys could do to help, but spreading the word about not only our fundraiser, but also getting food into these children's hands is really important to us, and Victoria has worked really hard <laughs> to make this happen. She's helped spearhead this as a student. So we just wanted to come and talk to you all about it and say thank you very much for letting us uh, take up your time. You all have any questions? Thank you, Emma. It's pretty straightforward, right? <laughs> thank all right, you. thank you so thank much. You all you thank you, thank you so much. Okay, okay this time we have remarks uh, by the council and mayor. Start with you, Council and Wilson. Start on the front Wilson. row. Um, a couple of clarifications. I know there was some um, concern around the FAA agreement that we signed. Um, Y'all know last week I asked that we not consider that immediately so we could have time to review it. But uh, I just want to clarify the reason I support that is because if we all share the common goal of improving that airport, we've got to have the federal funding to do it. And although maybe the language uh, was uniquely worded. It didn't actually do anything else but ensure that we would be able to continue to receive this money from the FAA and partner with the airport authority. So um, that's the reason I supported that. Um, the OLF resolution, I know this, you know, a lot of people have very strong opinions about this, but again, I think that it's um, a misdirection. I think it's a political move that simply relocates money out of the city's coffers and into other entities. Um, and I think it's been tried for a long time in this state. There's been lots of examples of Montgomery trying to come and take some resources and reposition them. Um, but the bottom line is the selling point for me and the reason I support the opposition to that OLF resolution is exactly what was said in the letter about the bond rating issue. I mean, city have credit ratings just like individuals do. And if your paycheck gets cut in half and you go to the bank to try to borrow some money, they're not gonna let you borrow near as much money as they would if you had a full paycheck. So when you look at what this means over 20 years for us as a city, it goes down incrementally until it goes to zero in 20 years. Well, it's $15.8 million a year. So do that on a progressive scale for 20 years, that's over $100 million that's being taken out of this community. And if you don't think that the people who decide whether or not we can get funding to do projects are going to look at that, you're wrong. That's all they're going to look at. They're going to go, wait a minute, you guys are guaranteed to have $100 million less money over the next 20 years? Yeah. We're not going to let you refinance that bond. We're not going to let you do those water and sewer projects. We're not going to let you do those economic development projects on the riverfront. So I think that the OLF tax is, is something that needs to be addressed. We need to have a long-term solution for it. But again, in my research, in places where something legislation like this is passed, they're simply taking it away from the city and giving it to somebody else. Um, if I thought for one second that this would result in lower taxes for everybody in this county, I'd be, I'd be the first one out there supporting it. And I hope you guys, I hope I've proven that. But um, I just don't agree with it. And so that's the reason I supported the resolution. Um, and, and to be clear, I know there's a lot of people, anytime we bring up something for immediate consideration, uh, it, it raises a red flag. And I agree that we utilize that way too much around here. I think uh, most of it, like in the case of the OLF resolution, is actually needed. We have a, bo a vote that's pending in the legislature. It's important that we get that message to the legislature before the House of Representatives votes on a bill. Um, but I agree with the criticism that we utilize immediate consideration in this uh, chamber way too often. But in this case, I, I support the, the use of it for the OLF. Um, as far as the um, the, the process in general of how we go about considering things, again, like another one that we considered today was based on a, um, an expansion project for a business. It got brought up as it got raised as an issue. It was apparent that we needed to address it right now, and so that's why we brought those up. But I agree with those that have concerns about how we utilize that function of government. That's all I have, Madam President. 
Councilman Bag. Thank you, Madam President. I uh, wanted to uh, make an announcement that tomorrow night at 5 o'clock at the First Baptist Church Family Life Center, I'm going to be having an Edenwood neighborhood meeting. There are some specific issues in Edenwood uh, that occurred over the weekend, and we're going to be discussing that. Numerous people from our police department will be there, along with Brian Harbison from the building department. So it's not necessarily a district-wide, District 4 uh, meeting. It's specifically for Edenwood. I wouldn't say that you aren't allowed to attend because it's an open meeting, but we're going to be discussing issues specifically related to the Edenwood neighborhood. And uh, Ms. Clapp, I want to just thank you for uh, what you and, and you're doing for helping with food insecurity at the high school and in the city. Uh, for years, I've been involved in similar type programs and efforts, and it's a real problem. Uh, there's a group uh, that, uh, that I'm involved with that provides backpack weekend program backpack at Stripland. There's 125 students every year for the last five years that have received those backpacks. That number is predicated upon the school system identifying and family signing off that they will accept those, those programs. Uh, I mean, those uh, backpacks. And so there is a problem with food insecurity. So thank you for what you're doing. And I'm proud to be a, uh, a table sponsor uh, at your event and uh, would like to get with you. Uh, in fact, I took out my phone while you were talking. I wasn't texting. I was writing myself a note because I will forget if I don't do that. So I'm going to call you this afternoon. I hope you're uh, available and I have some ideas of, of some, uh, you know, there's one thing I've learned being in, uh, helping in GADS and I served on the Community Development Board for eight years, which distributes, you know, the 1.2 million annually. There are so many good programs in Etowah County. Uh, that also results in some duplication sometimes of efforts and then the money uh, that is there maybe doesn't go quite as far. I'm not saying that's what's happening now. I'm just saying there's uh, sitting in that chair for eight years, you get to see the whole field. So I can see where I can connect and, and network. And so I'll, I'm, I'm excited to get to speak with you. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, great. But thank you all. That is, that is uh, talk about changing lives. One, one belly at a time, that is so important. You know, children can't learn on an empty stomach. <clears throat> and it is embarrassing, and they don't want their peers to know. It's, a, it's just an, it's a, a, a challenge, and, uh, and I thank you for helping to meet that, that challenge. Uh, the, uh, earlier in our pre-council meeting, I, I put uh, our engineer, Heath Williamson, kind of on the spot asking about the Prince Metal uh, program that we brought up today. Uh, Councilman Wilson talked about it just a little bit. Uh, those things happen almost, I won't say every week, but happens every month, easy, every, probably every other week. And what that is, is, is that you plan and you budget and you forecast, but then there's always unexpected uh, challenges and this is going to be this is a fifteen thousand dollar engineering but the actual work is probably going to re be in the hundred thousand dollar range and that's not necessarily in the budget uh, but it's going to be handled it's going to be absorbed it's not necessarily a, a problem it does become a problem when you remove the two percent occupational tax that's that's just one of the many dangers of when if that were to become a reality because you can't plan for a pipe to burst. You don't know when that's gonna happen. We didn't know there were two large pipes underneath the ground where Prince needs to expand. And we're very proud of them and very glad to be working in partnership with, with uh, Prince Metal Stamping. So sure, we're gonna do what we're supposed to do and, and we're gonna help them, but it's your tax dollars that is helping do that. So you have to be really cautious when you, when you wanna do something like that. And you gotta think it all the way through now, I just don't think that this uh, was, was thought all, all the way through. Just a real quick history, the occupational tax was created for Gazden in 1952, 1% 1 in 1964, they added another 1%, where it's at the present day, 2%. I think at that time, the city leaders chose to do that as opposed to maybe raising property taxes. Because if you look at our property taxes, we're amongst the lowest in the state. We are the highest in, in, uh, at 2% in the state for occupational tax. Other cities have 2%, but so do we. Uh, but it represents 29% of our budget. Uh, 
you, you have to understand, or I have to try to understand, we need about 50 to $55 million to run the city of Gadsden. And if you start taking away 750 a year and it comes to 15.8 million, it's almost a third of your income, it becomes untenable. It, you, you can't run the city. Look at it this way, $52 million. Take off a lot of those zeros and get it down to a, a $52,000 household. All of, in, any of you out here might be bringing home $52,000. And then I'm gonna take away about 15 or $16 million. You're gonna have 36,000 or 37,000 now to operate your household. Well, how do you overcome that? How do you overcome going from 52,000 a year at your house to 36,000 a year? What are you gonna to have to do? This isn't a scare tactic, you're gonna to have to cut. You're gonna to have to cut your expenses a, 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 a large amount. And that's what the city would be faced in, in doing if that were to happen. So that's just something to, to consider. The other thing Councilman Wilson brought up was uh, uh, the bonds and the interest rates. Right now we have a fairly favorable rating in the, in the bond market that can change with this. And then that uh, our rating is not good. What that means is the interest rate goes up. Now our debt service goes up. Now we have even less money to spend in the, in the city. So those are just, and that's not an inclusive list, but those are just the things that kind of jump off the page when I think about what is the city gonna do with uh, that much less money. And I realize 750,000 a year, but that adds up y'all in two years, that's one and a half million every year. And then so forth, you just have to start doing that math. It's, uh, it, is, it is not an easy situation to put yourself in if you're gonna be trying to operate this, this city. So those are some of the things that I believe that, that I'm thinking about. I'm sure others have similar opinions, but just wanted to offer that as an example of, of, of I think of what the danger is of, uh, of, of, of doing away with that. So just a quick reminder, Edenwood meeting tomorrow night, five o'clock, the Family Life Center. I didn't give the address. It's at the corner of Sixth Street and Walnut Street. And so uh, look forward to seeing all of my Edenwood friends there. Thank you. Councilman Williams. I'm sorry. I uh, I won't belabor the point, but uh, but I will go back to a, um, a moment, maybe a few years ago, when I was, uh, you know, seizing one of the opportunities that uh, one of the many opportunities that I would take to sit at the feet of uh, of, uh, of Bob Eccles when he served on this council, and uh, you know, and we we would talk about a lot, but I I did get an opportunity to talk to him some about. Um, the the thought process behind the occupational tax um, and you know one of the big contentions that he would always make uh, is that uh, you know we uh, have seen due to due to due to flight due to motivations that have driven people to move out of the city whatever those may be um, we, we've seen our population decrease over the years um, from roughly a little bit north of 50,000 people to, to right around 36,000. But we're still the, the, the hub of the county. We're still at the center of the county. Uh, and, uh, and so the responsibility to maintain the infrastructure and to manage the traffic and, and the, uh, the, 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 the activity that goes on still lies on the city. And so we would never be successful in getting the surrounding counties or, or surrounding, surrounding municipalities to, to write us a check to, to manage those, uh, the, that, that, those infrastructure costs and the maintenance costs. We, there's no way that, that that could happen. Uh, and so one of, the, one of the things that you have to do uh, is that you have to come up with creative ways to, uh, to, be, able, to be able to manage those expenses. And, and I, you know, I said this in a finance committee meeting a couple weeks ago, and I'll say it again. Um, you know, if you juxtapose our financial situation in 2005 versus where we are right now, uh, I mean, it is it is unbelievable the financial turnaround that we've that we've made. 
um, and, and to put ourselves in a very sound financial position as a, as a city. Um, and so, you know, us being sound financially um, allows us to uh, allow, some, allow for some assurances for our employees and for the constituents that we support. Again, I respect everybody's position on this. I don't expect, you know, a person that is uh, is having to watch that two percent uh, be deducted from their check to be um, necessarily okay with it. Uh, but I do think I have a responsibility as an elected official to to get you to understand uh, why I think it's important and why I think uh, you know we have a responsibility to support sound fiscal management. Um, we've been able to weather quite a few financial crises here over the last few years, not the least of which is this pandemic. And we've been able to do it um, uh, fairly successfully because we had ample cash reserves to manage through some of these things. Um, now, thank goodness we've been propped up by some, uh, by some cash infusions from DC, uh, but uh, those cash infusions alone wouldn't be enough um, considering what we faced. Um, so so I, I just want people to understand when we take this position, it's not that we're ignoring uh, what we hear about people being opposed to the occupational tax. It's just that we kind of see it from a different perspective. And while we're respecting your perspective, I just ask that you, you, you respect ours as well because we, we obviously see um, the financial impact. Um, and so, uh, again, I... I really appreciate this council. I appreciate all the councils that I've worked with uh, because by and large, uh, we have been fiscally responsible. And I do not want to miss, uh, you know, I'm going to repeat it for the third time. I, I'm not going to, I don't want to miss Councilman Wilson's point regarding uh, bond uh, ratings. If you look around this city and look at anything of substance, uh, it was probably done through the leveraging of debt. Um, Right now, we have the loss of our largest employer staring us in the face. Um, and believe it or not, this prospect of, a, of an occupational tax loss is harmful. Um, you know, I, you know they're, gonna, they're probably going to be a lot of people to step up and want to sign up for uh, elective office at some point in the future. Um, and, and, and honestly, if this thing passes, if, uh, if our bond rating gets reduced, I mean, we're afraid, you know, to, to a large degree, we're just trying to avoid any scenarios that require us to go to market because you just never know uh, how these things can impact you. Um, I would not want to be one of those people stepping into uh, elective office under those circumstances, not having the ability to manage your, your expenses, not having the ability to raise revenue. Um, you know, th th they stack the deck against us locally because, you know, the, the way we're structured as a state, there, there's no home rule. So, so you, you have to, you know, anything of significance has to go through Montgomery. Um, and we know our needs. We know our issues here. Uh, Montgomery typically doesn't. And, and as we've seen here for a number of years, they don't ask. Um, so. So again, it's just something for us to consider, um, and I really didn't mean to say that much about it, but uh, but I think you know both uh, both Councilman Back and Councilman Wilson made some very good points. Um, our prayers go to the folks of uh, Boulder, Colorado. You really don't want to. I mean, you know that 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 dredges up a lot of emotion, um, but uh, our prayers. Um, and condolences go to the, the families and the people of that, of that city. It's a horrible event. Um, also want to offer up uh, condolences to uh, former council member Bill Stewart. Um, we got some ter terrible news regarding his son. Uh, we're pay praying for you and your family, Bill. Um, and, um, you know, we, we ask that you let us know where we can support and where we can be helpful. Um, and um, the last thing uh, for me is I'll provide an update on my father. Thank you to, uh, he's home now, and thank you to those who have, uh, who've been praying for him. I haven't really made um, 
you know, we, you know, I, I think I'm also thankful to those who've respected the privacy of the situation. We haven't really talked a lot about that publicly, but again, thanks for all the prayers, the well wishes. He's home. Um, I actually stopped to get him a hamburger on the way home, and and the way he devoured that hamburger let me know that he was feeling much better um, as we as we were on our way home. So, so again, thank you so much um, for the thoughts, prayers, well wishes, and uh, and we'll continue to fight. Thank you, Madam President. Mayor Guy. Yes, I want to follow up a little bit on what Derek's saying. Uh, the normal procedure in Montgomery is the governing body asks the people in Montgomery to pass laws and bills for us. Senator Jones is a legend in his own mind, and I know I'm being critical, and I don't care. He'll find out about it anyway, but it doesn't bother me, but... Uh, you know, when you don't have police, you don't have fire, you don't have uh, all, the, all the things around here that we subsidize, a school and, and several things, uh, then where are you going to be? So, uh, you know, he, he just uh, he doesn't bother to consult us or tell us anything. He just goes down and drops bills in. And there's a few people that's pulling his strings, and I've got a good idea who some of them are, but uh, he's clueless. That's it, and he doesn't care. So uh, you just next time election comes around, you just need to be sure who you're going to vote for because what they're going to do to you, put you out of business. So that's all I got to say. Thank you. Councilman Worthy. Nothing, Madam President. I'm not going to say anything right now. Councilman Cannon. I'd just like to say that, uh, Derek, I hope your dad gets uh, feeling a lot better. Uh, he's a... Uh, He's a good guy, and, and I always tell him he looks a lot younger than you. Every time I see him, I always tell him that. I thank the world of him, and uh, our condolences do go with Bill Stewart and his family in this, this time of a loss. Uh, the occupational tax that, that we're trying to save here, uh, a lot of people sugarcoats and say, oh, it won't hurt the city. Well, you can take, you th take it to the bank anytime somebody loses money like the city of Gadsden, you're going to have to pay it back some way. You either have to pay in uh, more garbage fees, you're going to have to start paying for your brush to be picked up on the side of the road. Uh, there's just all kind of things you'll have to pay, and it's probably going to cost you more once you do all that than it would be to leave the occupational tax like it is. Uh, the occupational tax, we pay salaries. Uh, we do a tremendous amount of stuff, and all the employees, the city of Gaston has, everybody complained when COVID hit. We laid people off, and we had to do stuff. Well, if we take this occupational tax away in about the second or third year, you won't see hardly anybody getting to work. Your response time on policemen will probably, you know, have, we'll probably have to do away with cut some off police officers and some firemen, <laughs> public works employees, park employees, secretaries. That's just going to, it's just a, it's going to make your city go down. It's not going to help your city when we do away with this tax. You might bring a little bit home on your check more, but it's going to cost you in the long run. And I've paid occupational tax for 40-something years. Uh, I complained a lot about it, but now since I know where it's gone, going to and what we do with it, I'll never complain again because I want to see this city strive and prosper. And you take that kind of money away from this city, it won't. I mean, it just, it will have to go down and you people that's on the council or the mayor, whoever's here, you cannot get that money back once it's gone. You know, I don't care if you bring another business in here, you look at all the money you're going to lose in 20 years. Every year, $750,000, and that's hard to come up with. Uh, I just think it's a political thing. Uh, to me, it's like uh, we're going to want everybody to get this bill passed and vote. And it's the same time uh, the legislators and everything's running. And that just kind of is right in that time frame. And that's a good thing for somebody to run on that says they're going to save you money and give you money, but they're not going to tell you in the back end it's going to cost you a lot more and you're going to do without services that you have. So I just think it's a bad <clears throat> move. And that man that's trying to do this, I've seen him twice. The first time I seen him was a Christmas lighting ceremony I hear at the me and Ben and Miss Ivor was out there with our, well, my wife and Ben's wife. He came up running up to us and telling us who he was and 
wanted to see the mayor and took off. And another time is I've seen him here in this audience about the rendering plan. I don't think he stayed the whole time, but that's the only times I've seen the guy. Hadn't talked to the guy. Uh, I know what he looks like, but you know, you need to come to us and tell us what your plans are before you try anything like this and uh, talk to us and ask us how it would hurt our city, you know, and everybody around us. Cause it, this is a big thing here, guys. This is gonna hurt a lot of people. We could have layoffs when this thing goes through, the new council here, the new mayor, if there's one. It's, it's a big deal just, you know, cause you might get eight or $10 in 20 years on your check. It's not worth that. Trust me, it's not worth that. I just hope and pray that this, this what we're doing today will get a message out and we can stop this from even going to a vote. Thank you. Councilman Reed. You know, Madam President, I think the uh, occupational tax in the past has come up, what, Frankie, three or four times, uh, went to the Supreme Court. It was ruled on, uh, which shows me that when it comes right down to it, Johnny, you're right, Mayor, uh, and all of us, the senator's trying to make a little name for himself, which is fine. I don't care. Uh, I think he's digging himself a hole, and then we, he can deal with the dirt once he digs it. I think that's the that's exactly where he's going with it. Uh, I want to revisit just a minute, and I'm going to be short, about litter. Uh, it's picking back up again, I think because of the COVID situation that people are out and just enjoying it now. It was tied up pretty well for a while, but uh, I'm getting a lot of calls about the guests and times. I don't know where y'all have noticed it or not, but they put this paper that nobody wants and they throw it out in your driveway and you run it over three or four times, it ends up out in the street. I'm talking about the mountain Alabama city. You people can deal with it wherever you are. But I would, I would have been asked to tell the times, please keep it. That's a secret to it, because if you don't throw it out there, we ain't gotta worry about it being litter. The next with Lisa Osborne, is doing a great job. I was going home the other day up Clayton Boulevard, and there's Lisa out, 35 bags of garbage and trash that she picked up on just that one street. So my kudos go out to Lisa for doing an extremely good job. Um, I do want to touch on the airport. When I came on this council, the airport, you couldn't taxi your aircraft from the hangar out to the to runway because of the cracks and everything in the taxiways. The runways were let, were, had been let go. That was starting out. Fred Sington came on the scene. We've had electrical upgrades down, down there, extreme upgrades. Uh, we've had taxiways paved, runways paved. The military presence has been a godsend out there. And that comes in with the drops. I believe they're back, Mayor. And everything was good there. Uh, and the biggest thing was the ILS system. Now people can be directed in. When I was flying, they stood on the ground and told us you were five feet above the glide pattern or five feet below or whatever. Now they can come right in on the beam. No problem. That's a big asset to this, to this airport. So every time I pick up a newspaper or hear people, there's something wrong with the airport. They don't know what but they want to see the paperwork and the audits, which are there. But it's always a negative about the airport. And I've never seen anything out there but pluses to the airport that's been done in the last 20 years. I know a lot of things have to be done now that want to be done. They want UPS in here, they want uh, FedEx in here, and so on and so forth. Well, my thing is this, if you have the expertise and you've been around long enough to help, instead of condemning it, why don't you come out there or get in touch with FedEx and UPS and Goodyear and Cooper and all those people and get them to help us with the airport. I'm just getting tired of seeing all the negativism about it. And I would hope that people would get involved. I see we have one or two applications for the board. That's an improvement and their resumes look pretty good, but that's a small step. We want a big step, y'all. Get on that newspaper and ask UPS to come in here. That's what we need. Or we need uh, FedEx, I repeat. Anyway, that's all I got. Just wanted to tell you that. Since everybody's been talking about the uh, occupational tax, it's just one word I'd like to 
put out there, and it's called bankruptcy. Uh, and uh, that's what it will lead to. And bank bankruptcy means uh, financial ruin. Find out what have happened to other cities that have bankrupt and see how we would fare. And I'm speaking, I'm going to speak to the city employees uh, if you're listening. Nobody likes taxes. I don't like taxes. But uh, I was always told that you're going to pay taxes until you die. But so bankruptcy is what we're trying not to happen. That's what this is all about. We've said all around it, but bankruptcy is financial ruin. And employees of Gaston, if the city of Gaston file bankruptcy, your insurance, your benefits, all of those things are lost. So, you know, it's, it's good to, and I, I was told when I retired, you either pay on the front end or the back end. And so this is what's going to happen. So bankruptcy, think, think bankruptcy, because when it comes up to vote, sure, everybody's going to vote for no taxes. But when you bankrupt, and I'm talking to the city employees of Gaston, you're the one who's going to lose, uh, not Mr. Jones. Uh, or anybody else, but it's you that are working that's going to lose. So at this time, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn.